So Scratch is an amazing program, but it's also quite limiting at the same time. Like they don't have a physics engine or a camera system, which makes our lives a lot harder. And as well at the same time, his performance isn't that great. And exporting your games to places besides Scratch's website and maybe itch.io is quite hard. So that's why eventually you'll have to swap to a game engine. Plus using game engine is a lot faster. But the thing with game engines is you don't have you scratch block coding or anything like that. And it's definitely a lot scarier and a bit more difficult than scratch. So today I just thought I'd make a video where I do side by side comparisons of one of the most popular game engines Unity with scratch. Now this isn't going to be your full make a game in Unity tutorial but rather than just me comparing some of the code to scratch to show you guys that programming isn't actually as hard as it may look. So before this video starts, first off, I want to thank you guys for 2,000 views in the last video. That's pretty crazy. And if you find you guys find this video helpful, please consider subscribing because it helps me out and also uh, notifies you when my next video comes out. So if you guys want more helpful videos like this and devlogs in the future, consider hitting that subscribe button. Or at least hitting that like button would help me out because it puts this video out to other people. So not only will it be helping me, you'll be helping other people find this video and help them get into Unity. But anyways guys, let's jump straight into this. Let's talk about Unity UI. Over here we have the, something called the hierarchy, which is basically the sprite menu that holds all of our sprites in Scratch. But in Unity it holds game objects, which I'll talk about in a second. Then you come down here, we have this project tab or, or the assets tab. This is basically like the costume and sound effects tab mashed into one thing that holds your scripts, your uh, costumes or pictures or whatever, PNGs, sprites, whatever, and your sound effects as well. It can overhold all their stuff, um, but I won't get into that right now. And then you have something here to call the inspector, but we need to have a game object to use this. So come over to your hi hi hierarchy, hierarchy, my gosh, <laughs> and create a new game object by right clicking and then create empty. So we create a new game object. As you see, we click it, it pops up the inspector. We can expect all the components on this game object. Every single game object automatically comes with a component called the transform. Now, you might be wondering what's a component. Now, a component is something that gives a game object attributes. So, see this transform tab, or this transform component? It gives our character the attribute of a position, rotation, and scale. Now, you can't really, you can't remove this pro uh, trans component. This is on every uh, game object you create. And this also doesn't move our character. I can see this little circle here in the middle of the screen. I can move the circle, which is our player. I can move him up and down, X and Y and Z. And then again, X, Y and Z are just how you be changed values like rotation. I can also change the scale, but you can't see that because we don't have a way to see our character. That's when a component comes in. So let's add a component called the sprite render. So bam, this allows us to render in images or sprites. I'm going to grab my sprite I have in my assets tab and put it inside of the sprites. And as you can see, our character comes in. Now I forgot to set my scale. Bam. So now as you can see, I have my scale here. I can change the scale value and move, mash him, mush him around in all directions. I can even grab our Z rotation and rotate our character around. Or I can even flip his sprite using this sprite renderer and flip him like that. So yeah, so that's some of the fun stuff that you can do and just some of the, the basics of the Unity menu. There's all these tabs, but you don't really need to worry about those just yet. Now, earlier guys said that even the asset menu can hold my scripts. Now that's one of the things, scripting is a lot different. You might have, you know, might be one of the intimidating things of pro running the program. So that's why I put that as a script and I'm gonna explain everything comparing it to Scratch. When you create a C-sharp script for Unity, you're gonna get this automatically generated with a bunch of stuff. Now I've added some stuff to mine, so it'll look different. So up here, as you can see, we have this thing that says using system collections and using Unity engine. This is basically just telling us that we're going to be using the game engine, uh, using the Unity engine library, which just gives us a bunch of custom functions and allows us to use cool stuff in our script. You don't want to touch any of this stuff or else you probably will break everything. Public class, my new script and model behavior. Don't worry about that stuff. You come in, that might look a bit contaminating. Don't worry about it. All you need to know is place your code inside of the squiggly lines, which will be located by following this dotted line here. Or just by, yeah, so just put it inside of the squiggly lines that follow after this. Now variables. To make a variable, you go public or private. Public or private, um, basically it's like sending your variable if you want it to be for this sprite only or for all sprites. The type of value it's going to be, so I set it to float, which if you didn't know, float is 
basically a value that can be an integer or a whole number or a decimal number. So after you say if it's a public or private, you then say it's value type, which mine's a float, and then you say the name, and then you set it equals to the value. So mine variable one or variable two are set equal to five each, both of them. And then we end our code with a semicolon. So you end each line with a semicolon, unless it's followed by uh, squiggly lines. So there's all kinds of values that we can set, such as a private bool. And you can even make your variables contain components. Like this one contains a sprite render, which I talked about earlier. So when you come into your Unity thing, you're going to have two custom functions already in your script. Void start and void update. Void start is basically when you're going to click. And what void update is... um basically forever so one green five clicked forever but you don't have to put green green five clicked it's just this void update runs forever these are functions that get called automatically by unity but you don't really need to worry about that as you see here i got a void star here inside of these squiggly lines though i put my code which i can make do this now i want to explain what this is later and again void update again i just you just put your code inside of these squiggly lines because there are functions and stuff to create your own custom function you type void the name of your function put some parameters and if you want you can put stuff inside of these parameters it's kind of like um functions are basically custom blocks from scratch but they're not called custom blocks they're called functions see these values in here um are kind of like when you put like a roundy thing i can't remember what they call it when you create a custom block again i'm gonna be showing images on the side so you'll be able to see everything but it's kind of like when you tell it hey i want like to be able to insert this type of value into my custom block that's what we do when you put stuff in the parameters and you separate each value by a parenthesis so a and b are separated by a parent or a comma sorry and then you have to tell it which value you'll insert so i'd tell it int a and int b so then i can refer to a and b in my script below inside of the function if that's complicated don't worry about it you can probably find some videos explaining it but all you need to know is that you avoid the name of your function parameters and squiggly lines you can only leave the parameters empty so yeah and as you can see if you call a function you just type the name of your function the parameters and if there's any type of value inputs you gave it and then you end it again with a semicolon if statements in c sharp are really similar to um you know the same thing there's basically like scratch you just go if para uh, parentheses or parameters sorry and then you insert your condition this can even just be a variable that's equal to true or false which is a bool value but don't worry about it and then again, we put parameters, squiggly lines. And then again, we don't we don't put a semicolon after this because we have squiggly lines, like I said earlier. You don't put semicolon after squiggly lines. Now we can even do something that Scratch doesn't have, which is else if. Basically, it means if this top condition, if if that's if that condition is false, and the condition condition that we put inside of the parameters, I didn't put condition, but I can just put like condition, which is a variable I made earlier. So else if condition up here is false and the condition is inside here we run the code inside of these squiggly lines or we don't even have to use this else if and we can just use it else and if you put it else after an else if it means if both these conditions up here are wrong then run this whatever goes inside of this else statement well there you guys go that's my whole side by side comparison of scratch and unity i hope this video is helpful to you guys and yeah hopefully this made it a bit less intimidating if you guys are going to go learn a new game engine or something like that and shows that it's actually not that hard or not that complicated and it isn't just trying to memorize a bunch of zero and ones if you guys have any questions let me know down in the description below i'll be open to answering all you guys' comments and if you guys found this video again helpful um please consider subscribing or at least liking this video if it was helpful to you guys because then i'll put this video out to more people and then it'll help them out anyways guys i'll see you in the next video